Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with another bit of Total War, Warhammer 2, Quick Magic Gameplay. This time around, we are playing as the Beastmen against the forces of the Dark Elves on the map, the Oasis of Lost Hope. And this time around, we are running a bit of a Malagor and Saigor summon build. Uh, these are definitely still rather popular despite the nerfs to Saigor's accuracy. Obviously the Saigor summon is still very, very powerful. Um, potentially you can get two Saigors out of Malagor over the course of a long battle, so definitely very, very potent. Um, really, nowadays with Beastmen, you've only got two main strategies. One is Morgur for that extra survivability in those chaos spawn, and then the other one is really centered around Malagor. Um, of course, you can do stuff like Vanguard and whatnot, but I didn't really feel like doing that this time around. So Malagor is, of course, dirt cheap. I only brought two, uh, two spells on him, the Mantle of Gorok, as well as, of course, the Saigor Summon, the Savage Dominion. I'm a big fan of Mantle of Gorok, just because it helps you deal with uh, some of the tougher units. If you need to wipe out and Lords on Dragons, that sort of stuff, it's very potent. Of course, he does have Arcane Conduit to get extra Winds of Magic. He has a pretty good with our with the magic to begin with. Um, not the greatest melee combatant, but not terrible either. And uh, just a pretty solid solid uh, caster in general. That's really what you bring him for. Three units of Bestigors uh, in the front, um, of course, will provide me with a very strong armor-piercing core, and they can kind of trash everything the Dark Elves put on the field, except for Blackguard and... Um, except for Blackguard and the uh, Harganeth Executioners, though obviously you have to be very wary of Dark Shards, which can tear through their armor like a hot knife through butter. Out on the flanks we just some uh, Algor Herds, just to give us a little extra width, and furthermore there are three Spearmen Herds, kind of surrounding the main box here, um, and providing some additional anti-large support, in case my opponent has dragons, or cold ones, or dark riders, or that sort of stuff. Uh, out in the front, we do have two units of centaurs with throwing axes. These guys are obviously pretty decent against stuff like dragons or against heavily armored troops, and they can chip away at, say, Blackguard, which would give this unit, this army, a big, pro uh, big challenge. Uh, they can chip away at Harganeth executioners, those sorts of units, and they're actually still pretty effective at shutting down enemy dark riders, just because they're so quick on their, and their melee stats are decent. Of course, we do have two units of mentors with gray weapons, which I find are pretty powerful, actually. Uh, personally. Perhaps shield might be better just for the extra melee defense, especially if you're rolling with Mantle of Gorok to get that extra melee attack um, to begin with. But nonetheless, I do like the Minotaurs with great weapons. They are very potent at just trashing heavily armored troops and uh, definitely bring two of them. It does give you some mass in case your opponent tries to, for example, goon out Malagor. Finally, a Saigur over here. It does round things out and it is immediately going to start chipping away at my opponent's troops. I'm going to be focusing on the Harganeth Executioners, of course, who are the prime priority here. It's important to keep in mind that if you bring Malagor instead of some of the alternate lords, he is a very cheap lord, uh, despite his spells, so you can often make go a little wider than if you, say, bring Morgur. It does give you a little bit of extra spending money to, uh, say, get those Angors or those um, filler units. Now, for my opponent, he did decide to bring Malekith, who is somewhere here on the ground, hidden amongst his troops. I do believe I'm actually struggling to find him. Oh, here he is, right next to the Canite Assassin, on foot with his sword and shield. Uh, very tanky lord, very decent overall. Uh, some pretty good stats. You can see he gives him Malice, which is pretty powerful against Beastmen, for disruption and that. Uh, Doombolt, of course, Soul Stealer, uh, Blade Wind, it's just basically, I do believe, his entire roster of spells actually, and Stand Your Ground, so very, very solid, though no uh, debuff against, the, no de cooled up down debuffs, no, none of his items. A Canine Assassin alongside him is pretty heavily equipped, you can see, coming in with the uh, Black Lotus for Discourage, which can be pretty potent against Beastmen, Dark Venom, which I think is personally useless, as I've said before, and then Black Dragon Egg to mess up squishy units. A single Black Reaper Bolt Thrower back here will be able to chip away at some of my units. You can see it's already hitting those Centigors, and it does give my opponent some armor-piercing firepower. While on the on first front line, it is a mix of uh, Bleak Swords, Black Arc Corsairs, and Harkonneth Executioners all the way out on the flank. So this definitely gives my opponent a well-rounded force that can basically trash anything the Beastmen put on the field. Uh, Harkonneth Executioners will outtrade Bestigors, and Bleak Swords and uh, Black Arc Corsairs will outtrade the lower-end Beastmen troops. Finally, my opponent does have two units of Dark Riders, as well as a single, single unit of Dark Riders with repeater crossbows, providing with some AP shooting and just some ability to kind of chip away at my troops, as well as a single unit of Cold One Eyes to shut down any of my large. You can see already uh, those bolt rounds are going in against my Centigors throwing axes, who I'm pulling away with. And you can see the lobbed rocks from the Saigor are already doing some nasty work here, and knocking down those Harkins Executioners by 10 models, and a further two with just there. Definitely a very powerful unit. You can see what I do here is I actually pull in with the Saigors, going into melee against Dark Riders, and this might seem suicidal, but they do have decent stats. Um, you can see they're not too much worse, and they do have a, actually better weapon strength, um, better I, I do believe better charge bonus, and with these Angor Spears in the mix, I'm going to be able to trash these Dark Riders, I'm going to get these Minotaurs in there, and I'm going to be able to slaughter the Dark Riders, get the Saigors, Centigors clear, and this way get rid of my opponent's light cavalry force early into the game, and you can see they're just getting slaughtered here in the pits. 
In the meantime, my Angors will zone away these Bleak Swords, giving me, give me a little bit of breathing space. Bleak Swords will thrash Angors, it's not really a contest, but these guys are just going to buy me some time. In the meantime, you can see the Saigor hits slaughtering those Hargon's executioners who, do uh, who don't make it to the field before the best of Gors plow into them, so they're going to be in for a very bad time with all the their uh, debuff stats. Unfortunately, my best of here are engaging in a very bad angle. You can see they're kind of feeding into these Harkin executioners, and these guys are going to rack up a lot of kills in this fight. They've already slaughtered these Ungor herds pretty badly. In the meantime, over here, these Ungor spears are moving in to shut down the Reaper Bolt Thrower, and you can see, unfortunately, I make a big mistake here and send my Minotaurs with the Great to fight the Canine Assassin. I didn't realize Malkith was in there with him, and because of that, the Minotaurs will get slaughtered pretty badly, and Minotaurs, Minotaurs with the Great just aren't that good against uh, single targets like uh, on foot like this. That said, you can see my opponent's force is definitely falling apart. You can see the balance of power shifts in my favor as I finally get a Saigor summon. We started with very weak winds of magic. I do summon it right here so that I can get nasty hits on these Harkonneth Executioners. And in the meantime, you can see these Bestigors are going to start collapsing these Black Art Corsairs. Uh, unfortunately, over here, Malagor does kind of get caught out by these annoying Harkonneth Executioners. He's not really able to fight them very well. His stats aren't just aren't that good. And um, you can see his morale is tanking, though we do get a rocket point blank to kind of break those guys up a little bit. It's just not too, doing me too much good. Over here, Bestigors are providing a stop force against these bleak swords and the black arc corsairs they'll win that pretty easily but the minotaurs are just getting slaughtered in the pits over here the minotaurs are going to be able to beat down those bleak swords that just rattle off my ungors and my centaurs are able to kind of circle around and they'll be able to chip away these dark riders and the cold one knights and kind of get rid of them over here the saigor is still firing away my opponent has kind of um, beaten down malagor who is trying to escape here i'm just trying to force bat him through um, these best will win out against black arc corsairs uh you can see i'm throwing still robbing a lot lobbing rocks at those Harkonneth executioners trying to get them off the field for good uh you can see another meaty hit there damaging him and these ungor spears are shutting down this bolt throw for good uh, beast one of the cool things about beastmen is that if you get a unit to route you can often just slaughter it with any of your troops because they're just so much faster than the vast majority of your enemies only skaven can really compare pete with them for mo raw mobility over here, you can see, of course, the uh, Dark Riders with, uh, with shields are going to get caught out by the Centaurs of Throwing Axes. Centaurs, once again, they're just a decent a decent unit of melee. They're not comparable to, say, High Elf Illyrian Reavers, but against most other stuff, they will do pretty well. And you can see those Dark Riders get beaten down pretty hard and are going to get shattered. In the meantime, these Dark Riders do try to push in to help, and so I simply shift the target and go after them with the Centaurs. And uh, we're kind of just chewing my opponent's flight forces apart. Over here, unfortunately, you can see a black dragon going down the Ungor herd, doing a lot of damage, actually, given that it's, I do believe, a fairly cheap item. Um, and over here, you can see, though, the Harkonneth Executioner is getting shut down by the Summoned Saigor, as well as these un multiple units of, or the unit of Bestigors and the Ungors. Uh, these guys will just collapse when they get pincered like that. Over here, the Bestigors chewing their way through the Black Arc Corsairs. And uh, Malagor is coming back. Uh, you can see these Bestigors over here are going to help clean things up. These Dark Riders are kind of wasting their ammo on the Minotaurs. And really, my opponent's army, for the most part, has collapsed. You can see the balance of power just barely sitting in my favor, though obviously this is being propped up by the Saigor. And my opponent does have two very healthy heroes in the field, which is going to be... Um, kind of inflating I think in his favor so definitely I think things are at this point very much in my, in, on my side of things. Now over here I can simply leave the, uh, the Ungor herd to chase off the Harkonneth Executioners, pull off these Bestigors, you can see I shift the Saigor's attention on those Black Arc Corsairs, perhaps a little bit of a mistake, probably doing more friendly fire than actual damage to the Black Arc Corsairs there, uh, but this Saigor is not going to be long for this world. Over here, the Dark Riders doing some, uh, being a bit of a nuisance. I do try to chip away at my opponent's uh, lords and heroes here with the Centaurs of Throwing Axes. Um, trying to get rid of these Cold One Knights a little bit. They do get terrified by the proximity to the Saigor. And uh, you can see they're down to two models, so they're really not going to do very much. Uh, but my Saigor here has been routed off. The Saigor has atrocious melee defense, so it tends to break to anything or get beaten down by just about anything. Uh, my summon Saigor does go down, and you can see the balance of power has shifted to the center. My opponent still does have this unit of Dark Riders. He still has some Bleak Swords that could potentially rally. Um, and though definitely the core center of or the core of the fight here is definitely centered on Malekith, uh, my opponent still does have some options. So what I'm going to do here is because I see these uh, Dark Rider with his with repeater crossbows could still do some nasty work. I'm going to actually disengage my Centigors and send them to shut those guys down because the uh, Centigors are fast enough to do that. They do have that perfect vigor. You can see they're still fresh. Whereas these guys, actually these guys are fresh, so they probably were sitting around and uh, replying. They might have just been sitting around shooting. I'm not entirely sure how they're still fresh. Uh, might have actually been because of Murderous Prowess, which I do believe enhances Vigor for a little bit. Um, yeah, plus 18% Vigor, which is really, really potent. Um, we can see the Senegor is going to just push in, and that's actually one of the, that's actually a benefit I kind of forget about. It's very important to keep your units fresh, and that's actually one of the big benefits of Centigors, that if you can keep the late game, they stay fresh, and they are just a nasty piece of work to deal with. Where you can see the uh, Dark uh, dark Riders are going to turn to fight the Centigors. Um Obviously, they outnumber the Centigors, and they have more HP, but the Centigors are a better melee combatant, and I do have these Ungor Spears here who can push in to help. Over here, the Ungor Spears are just tying down the Canine Assassin Mal and uh, Malekith. You can see I do throw in some Minotaurs. My opponent does cast a Gaze Malice, but the Spestigors are pretty resistant. And I'm pulling back my Saigor into the fr pulling it back into the fray. It does have that decent melee attack of 44, so you can really kind of lay the smack down on this annoying Canine Assassin. Um, 
In the meantime, Malagor pull pulling back, ready to either summon another Saigor or get a cast of uh, the uh, Gorok's Mantle. And uh, because either way, either one of those would be really useful here for chipping down these troops. You can see that Saigor clocking that Canine Assassin for hundreds of HP. And uh, he's going to route here. And once he routes, my opponent's going to be left down on Malekith. You can see uh, over here the uh, Centigors have managed to run, run off the Dark Riders and are now going to go after the Bleak Swords. And uh, now it's just Malekith against the world. So he's really going to get kind of beaten down in the pits and uh, be defeated. I also did summon a Saigor there at the very end just to try and melee him down. Uh, because those Bestigors were a little low, and obviously a good Blade Wind or something there could make a bit of a difference. So uh, you obviously never know where your opponent's magic levels are, and uh, definitely want to be want to stay aware of that sort of stuff. Um, and uh, so we did get a Pyrrhic victory out of that. And I definitely think there's obviously there's many ways to play Beastmen. Saigor is one of the more annoying methods and definitely one of those things people, a lot of people don't like dealing with and I kind of understand why. Uh, it's just a very powerful unit that can do crazy damage to elite troops. Um, that said, this build is obvi they're very susceptible to uh, Lord Sniping. Obviously if Malagor dies, uh, Beastmen tend to fall apart very quickly. Most of their troops have atrocious morale, so if you can get rid of their leadership, even Bestigors will fall apart to tear outs pretty easily. Um, you, unless you're get, you're getting com unless you're completely uh, getting dominated by the beastmen, uh, I don't. I'm not entirely sure the minotaurs with great weapons were the correct choice here. I might have been better off just bringing minotaurs with shields. It would have been a little cheaper. Give me 200 extra points, which might have been enough for another unit of Angor spears, um, and th they would have been a little tankier against a lot of the troops that we were dealing with, especially against the troops on foot. And they're honestly not too terrible against large targets anyway. The minotaurs have pretty high melee stats, so especially with the Gorok's mantle, they could be pretty potent. Uh, the Saigor did some great work, and obviously the Summon Ones did some good work too. You can see the Bestigors just chewing through my opponent's troops very, very quickly, getting hundreds of kills. Um, the Ungors did some work, the Ungors Spears did some okay work as well. Obviously some got tied down trying to slug it out with Lords, which isn't going to be good for them, but they tried. And even the Centigors did pretty well, just shutting down that Light Calf pretty early into the game. For my opponent, you can see those Hargan executions that I engaged poorly were did great. The Bleak Swords that fought, probably my Ungors did good. And uh, Malekith racked up a good amount of kills, but... Uh, I think artillery pieces aren't too great against beastmen. Beastmen have a lot of options to shut them down pretty easily and cheaply. Um, Dark Riders, I'm also not the biggest fan of against beastmen. Um, because, once again, the Centaurs are just much better uh, in the light cab fight. Obviously, with some support from the Cold One Knights, they can do okay. But then again, beastmen do have Minotaurs, which are almost as fast as Cold One Knights. And Cold One Knights have Rampage and all that sort of stuff. I think a heavy infantry core is generally the way to go. Um, obviously, you do need something to shut down Saigors. Uh, in which case, perhaps more bolt throwers. I think that you really what you just need to do is be try to be aggressive, try to push in. Uh, perhaps not focus too much on elite troops. It's obviously difficult to say that, but uh, it can definitely be hard. You, um, it's one of those situations, I think, where the Dark Hills definitely uh, struggle. You could obviously go with, um, bring some shades, bring some dark shards. Those can provide you with good support. Uh, bring a fairly cheap and mobile front line that can just trash Ungors and gore and uh, gores, and uh, then just bring some AP missiles to deal with some bestigors. Because while bestigors are potent, they're very susceptible to shooting, and you can just mow them down. Nonetheless, uh, great game to my opponent. I'm a little pumped here. I do, and um, I do hope to see him again on ladder. I do hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a like and subscribe below. If you have any comments, criticism, any questions you'd like to share, be sure to post those down, and I'll respond as soon as I can. As usual, guys, I do appreciate you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.